All right, now we've talked about how to pack records on a page. The next question is how to pack fields in a record. So in the relational model, each record has a fixed type, and this is going to make our job a little bit easier. We're going to assume that somewhere off to the side, we have a schema for the table that we're currently storing. We'll put that in a place we call the system catalog. And this is going to save us the trouble of storing type information with the records. So each record does not have to be self-describing. It doesn't need to describe its own schema. The schema is stored somewhere else in the system catalog. It turns out the system catalog is just a collection of more tables. And so uh, actually the system catalog is also built using the same representations that we're learning here. Our goals in this section um, for the record formats, we want to make the records compact in memory and on disk so that we uh, have efficient IOs. We don't do more IO than we need to because we keep the data small. And we want to be able to look up individual fields quickly. Why? Well, remember in SQL, we can say select column from table. I want to look up just that column in each row. And so I want quick access to any field in that table. And similarly to uh, record layouts, we're going to have an easy case with fixed length and a somewhat more interesting case with variable length. But now we're doing it on the field level, not on the record level. So let's look at the fixed length first because it's a bit easier to understand. The field types will be the same for all records in a file. As we said, the type information is stored in the system catalog. And our on-disk byte representation is going to be exactly the same as in memory. So there's nothing of the form of uh, what we might call serialization in Java, where you translate a memory format to a disk format. We don't do that in database systems. We're going to stay efficient, and we're going to keep the format in memory and store it verbatim on the disk. Okay, so we're actually going to have the raw memory representation on disk, which means that everything we do will be interpreting bytes stored on these pages in a raw kind of way. So to find the ith field in a record, if it's a fixed length record, we can do it via arithmetic by just figuring out the lengths of the i minus 1 fields before it, summing them up, and then taking the offset being the sum of the lengths of the fields before i. So this is nice and compact. Uh, so here's an example of a record. It's got one, two, three, four, five uh, fields. The first field's length four, the second field's length eight, the third field's length one, it's a Boolean, the fourth field's length four, and the fifth field's length seven. Okay, and we're assuming that each one of these is fixed length across rows. One of the challenges here is that nulls, if we have nulls in the data, we're going to have to waste the empty space on those nulls, okay? And we're going to have to find a way to represent those nulls. There's a bunch of problems when things get to be variable length uh, that are sort of generalizations of how we deal with null, okay? So suppose we have fields that are variable length. So here's an example of a record. The first field is Bob, the second field is big, comma, street. The third field is M, and so on. These first two fields are of type varchar, which is SQL's version for a variable length uh, string. The SQL's data type for variable length string is called varchar. So how might we store these things uh, to make sure we could accept names of all different lengths and addresses of all different lengths? Well, one thing we could do is we could take a short string like Bob, and we could pad it out to a big fixed length. So we could say, look, we'll make room for 32 bytes, even though we only need three here. All right. And that's all well and good until you get something even bigger than what you allocated for, right? So here's an example of a street name that's really long, Boulevard of the Allies, and it does not fit in the space we gave. So what can we do about that? Mm, won't work if we're just doing essentially fixed length storage with padding. Another possibility is to use delimiters. So we could store this record by putting, let's say, a comma between each uh, field. So Bob, comma, Big Street, comma, Mail, comma, 32, comma, 94703. And um, if we wanted to pull out an individual record here, I guess we'd have to start from the left, right, and count commas till we got to the right place. You can see there might be some issues here, yes? Okay. The first is that no matter what character we use for the delimiter, we might want to be able to have that character in our data as well. So comma, for example, is in our data here, big comma street. That's a field uh, all by itself with a comma inside of it. So if we tried to parse this thing, how would we differentiate the comma used to separate fields and the comma that's in the data. So this is a comma ch common challenge in text formats like comma separated values or CSV files. And it's all solvable, but it's pretty ugly and you end up using these escape characters which waste space. Uh, moreover, to find field number three, you have to start all the way at the left and count delimiters until you get to field number three. So there's a bit of a scanning cost in memory to access a given field. So the idea instead is we're going to take all the variable length fields and we're going to move them to the end of the record to make the access more quick. So here's an example. We'll introduce a record header 
We're going to put the variable length fields toward the end. And the record header is going to point to the variable length fields. And the fixed length fields are all going to be at the beginning, as they were in the fixed length record format. So um, this is pretty neat. It's going to allow us direct access to any field okay, by either doing arithmetic on the fixed fields or by following a pointer to a variable field. Um, it handles nulls easily. If you have a null in a variable length field, you just make the pointer uh, point to um, the same place as the next pointer, and then they're both pointing to the same place. You know that the first pointer is pointing to an empty null field. Uh, and so in that sense, they're useful for fixed length records too.